Hi guys, I uh, wanted to start back with this discussion about slow and fast lenses, slow and fast camera systems, and what that all means. A very fast lens will have a large aperture, okay? A slower lens is going to have a much smaller aperture. Let's take a look at your lenses that are the fastest. And what that means is the light is coming through the lens very, very quickly. That's why they call it a fast lens. The fastest lens in your kit is your 50 millimeter lens. It has a uh, maximum aperture of 1.4. The slowest lens in your kit is the 24 to 105. It has a maximum aperture of 4. All right. So this is still a this zoom lens is still a very very nice lens. I use this a lot in documentary work. It just will not give us quite the depth of field that our 50 will because it's not as fast. I also want to talk about fast and slow camera systems. What do I mean by a slow camera system? Here is the AG130. You've been using this for quite a while in fundamentals and uh, EFP1. If we were to look at a shot of these two bottles of hand sanitizer we'll see that the table's in focus, the bottles are in focus, and all the brickwork uh, in the background is in focus. It's very, very difficult to get a shallow depth of field out of one of these video cameras. That's why they're not used necessarily on a, on, a, on a movie. It doesn't mean they're useless, though. I want you to think about this for just one second. Programming that is totally unpredictable, unscripted, The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Cops, uh, world's deadliest catch. Those type of reality shows, things are happening so quickly that camera operators don't have time to deal with all the focus issues of this. All right, Sports, the Super Bowl, video cameras. Okay, so a lot easier to focus. So I want you to understand that, that you can work with these video cameras. They'll give you nice pictures. We usually use them on shows that are unscripted, they're unpredictable, and focus is going to become a very, very quick issue. You don't want to miss the shot. Therefore, the video camera is a very, very valuable thing. So as we look at this shot, everything's in focus. Okay, fine. Everything's in focus. If we want more of a cinematic look, we'll go over to more of a digital cinema camera where we can now start using prime lenses. And this is your slowest lens in your kit. This is your 24 to 105. And even though it is the slowest lens in your kit, you'll see, if we do a side by side, you'll see how much shallower the depth of field is with this 24 to 105 into the C100. So, this is kind of why we went to these, these digital cinema cameras to provide you with a camera that will give you a far more cinematic depth of field. So, when I go to design a shot, the first thing I got to start thinking about is. What is my depth going to be feel? What is my depth of field going to be? Is it going to be shallow or is it going to be great? If it's going to be shallow, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take the iris and I'm going to go wide open. I'm going to select the fastest lens in the kit. That's the 50 millimeter lens. Maximum aperture is 1.4. Now, as I go ahead and put this video on, you'll notice right away, well, Tim, you open the iris up all the way to get your maximum depth of field and look at what's happening to the video. It is overexposed. This is not a problem. I'll just dial in the ND until I get a, uh, get a decent exposure. If the ND is not enough, then I might have to go ahead and take the ISO down a little bit so make the camera a little less sensitive. If at that point it's still not enough, I might start to close the iris just a little bit and try to maintain my depth of field. But make no doubt about it, when I go to design a shot, I decide on the depth of field first, I worry about the controlling the light second. 